So I'm doing the third in my series, Developing a Plan for My Life. Developing a Plan for My Life. And the subtitle is Becoming and Winning. Uh, and the reason I'm preaching this message, as I've said earlier, and I need to always emphasize, is that 10 years ago, uh, in 2014, I preached messages leading to developing a 20-year plan, and I encourage each one of us to have a 20-year plan for our lives, what we want to do for the next 20 years of our lives from 19, uh, 2014 to 2034. Uh, and 2024 is the mid-term review. So this is 10 years after the 20-year plan. If you started it, uh, it's to encourage you to go back and rework your plan. If you didn't have the opportunity to have uh, a plan, that uh, this will give you the opportunity to have a plan. And when I conclude the series, I will put out a small document that you can take, and it will help you, give you a, a foundation, a guidance for you to have a plan for your life. This time, we are looking at a 10-year plan from 2024 to 2034. Whether you like it or not, 2034 is going to come. And don't be like those people in that country who never prepare for the rain and never buy raincoats. We're going to plan for the future. We're going to plan for the future, and we'll encounter the future, and we want to be ready when 2034 comes. So, becoming and winning. Last week, I spoke about moving from here to there. And uh, I tied it to Paul's mindset of pressing on and what God told Elijah about how to move from one place to the other. And today we will go a little bit into Paul's mindset. Uh, and we will notice uh, that since I started this series, I've focused more on mindsets and philosophies of life rather than just strategic plan, do this and do that and do that and plan A, plan B. Because most of the time, as I've come to know, people put a lot of things on paper, but they don't do it. Even companies have strategic plan, but it never materializes because the person who makes things happen is you. It's you. It's not what you have on paper. What you put on paper is not going to happen by itself. You make things happen. And that's why I'm focusing more on our frame of mind, our philosophy of life, and the mindset we should have as we approach our 20-year or 10-year plan. The Apostle Paul was a very intense person. When he was committed to something, he was committed to it with all his being. He was not a half-and-half half person. He is not one foot in, one foot out kind of a person. When he persecuted the early church, he did it with full intensity. And after he became a Christian, he evangelized with even more intensity. That is Paul. And he, he, he is the one where we want to look at uh, in our series. Paul was not a fatalist. He was not a humanist. He was a biblicist. He believes that he could do all things through Christ. Not, not a humanist view of, I can do all things. I'm the captain of my life, but I can do all things through Christ with God all things are possible. The Christian with a biblicist mindset believes that God has a plan for my life and God gives me the grace to fulfill the plan and I have to work extremely hard to fulfill that plan. So let's go in our reading to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 to 22 as we encounter Paul's mindset. And this is what he says. For though I am free from all men and women, <laughs> just, just to do it right for the woke generation. For though I'm free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. To the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews, so that so those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without the law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ. 
that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. I don't know about you, but when I read words like this in the Bible, it just gives me a picture of how a person approaches life, how Paul approaches life, how, how he sees life and how he lives his life. And there are a couple of things I want you to note. First, he talks about who I am, who he is, who you are, who I am, who we are, is what life has given to us. Each one of us can describe ourselves as to who we are. But this is how Paul says he is. He says, I am free. I am free. This is who I am. I'm a free person. From the Greek word eleutheros. It means unrestrained, exempted, not bound by obligation. Paul says, I am a free person. I am not a restricted person. I am not a restrained person. I am not a person who is under obligation to do what I do. I am free. Now, when Paul says, I am free, he's speaking within the context of the world he lived in. Paul was a Jew who lived in a Roman world. But Paul was a citizen of Rome as well as a citizen of Israel. He had dual nationality, so to speak. So, as a Roman, he was a free person. And the reason why that is important is that in the Roman Empire at that time, there were people who were free. Free people were citizens. And then there were those who were slaves. And slaves were the people whom the Romans had gone to conquer. They would include Germans and Spaniards and, and, and people who live in present-day France and, and so on, and Britain. All of these guys were slaves to the Romans. And so when the Romans conquered the territory, they would enslave the people. Paul says, I am free. I am not a slave. In, so in a Roman sense, he's free. In the Jewish sense, he's also free because he's a bona fide Jew. The Jews were the only people who, even when they were in slavery, felt they were free. The Jews were very confident that nobody could subjugate them. From biblical times, they've always believed they were free people. And so uh, uh, Paul felt, I'm free, both as a, a Roman citizen and also as a Jew. I have no obligations. I am not restrained. I am not bound. The question is, if you are free, how do you live your life? Then he makes a second statement, which is very important, especially as we think of having a 10-year plan. He talks about what I have made myself. So there are two things, who I am, and what I have made myself. Who I am is what life has given to me naturally. What I have made myself is the effort I have put in to become something else. So Paul says, I am free. Then he talks about who I am or what I have made myself. And look at what he says he has made himself. He says, I have made myself myself." A servant. I have made myself a servant. Isn't that a contradiction? If you are free, don't you enjoy your freedom? Paul says, I'm free, but I have made myself a servant. From the Greek word doulo or doulos, it means to be enslaved restricted, and to be under bondage. Now, he didn't say, people have made me servant. He didn't say, life has made me a servant. He didn't say, my parents made me a servant, or the Romans have made me a servant. He said, I have made myself. I am free to do whatever I want, but I choose to be a servant. What kind of mindset is that? What kind of a person would say, I'm free, but I'm going to choose to live like a servant? Now, 
While many of us strive to make ourselves kings and queens and lords, Paul made himself the opposite. While many of us seek to raise ourselves, Paul chose the opposite. The lesson here is very simple. I must choose whose slave I become. I must choose whose slave I become. Everybody is a slave to something. Whether you like it or not, you are a slave to something. And you must choose what kind of slave and whose slave you want to be. Most people are slaves to things they do not like or things that destroy them. Some are slaves to sin. Some are slaves to food. There are people who are slaves to food. They, 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 they got to eat. And sometimes people are slaves to a particular food. Even if their health or life depended on it, they are so enslaved by that particular practice that contrary to every medical advice, they will still practice what will kill them. The people who are slaves to sugar. And the doctor can say whatever, they will still eat sugar. People who are slaves to carbohydrates, to fufu and yam and, and all kinds of things. And they may be told, oh, this is injurious to your health, but they are so enslaved that they will still do it. You know you are a slave when you are doing something you know is not good for you, but you keep doing it. You're a slave to something. Some are slaves to football, especially the English Premier League. Some are slaves to fun. They love fun. Some are slaves to spending. No matter how much money they have, they're going to blow it and shake their head whilst blowing it. But you can also choose to be a slave to Christ. You can choose to be a slave to the Holy Spirit, a slave to the Word of God, a slave to righteousness, a slave to integrity, a slave to honor, a slave to wisdom. That means that no matter what happens, you're going to live for Christ and for the Holy Spirit and for wisdom, for honor, for integrity. That's the slave you have chosen to be. So Paul says, although I'm free, I have chosen my slavery. So how does that mind work, mindset work? In today's world, we will say that Paul is like the most educated person who learns as if he knows nothing. He is a rich person who spends wisely as one who has nothing. He is a person at the top of his game who trains as if he is just playing a justify your inclusion match. He's a top corporate leader who works as if he's a laborer. I am free. I'm the boss, but I work like a slave. I'm the top scorer, but I train like I'm just coming to play and justify my inclusion. I'm a great preacher, but I learn as if I just came out of Bible school. Because if you don't have this mindset of, I am free, but I choose to be a slave, there comes a time in your life when you think, I have made it. And when you get, come to, I have made it, you stop learning. So Paul says, I don't have any obligation to do what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. Nobody has forced me but I'm going to do it because I have chosen this kind of slavery. What kind of slavery have you chosen? Slavery to work hard, to report to work on time, to rise up early, to fulfill your word. Are you a slave to your word that when you make a promise, you have to keep it? 
Or you make a promise and say it's a free will. I said it, and so what? <laughs> I must choose whose slave I become. If Paul was not free and he was born into slavery, probably his mindset would be like, though I am not highly educated, I will make myself a specialist in my field. Though I was born into poverty, I will work myself out of poverty. Though I am just a beginner, I will push upwards with the skills of those at the top. Fulfilling a plan for your life doesn't start by what you put on paper, but it starts with how you think and how you see life. So all of you who want to be free, God bless you. But after you're free, you have to choose your slavery. You have to choose your slavery. That you get to a point in life where nobody marks your paper for you. You mark your own paper. You know, much of my adult life, I have not been under anybody. Because... I've been a senior pastor from when I was in my 20s. I was general overseer. Nobody marks me. Nobody demands anything from me. Nobody tells me when to wake up, what to preach, how to preach. No, nobody tells me that. Nobody corrects me. Because in Ghana, when you are the boss, you are properly the boss. <laughs> And there are people like that. You started your own company. You are the boss. You, are, you, you have nobody above you. And that's what Paul is saying. I'm free. But I've chosen to be a slave. That means I don't wait for somebody to mark my, my paper for me to pass the exam or to study. I study because I'm a slave to learning. I'm a slave to quality. I'm a slave to excellence. I'm a slave to integrity. I'm a slave to honor. I have enslaved myself. Because if you don't enslave yourself, you're always going to require somebody else to oversee your life. And if you have a 10-year plan, how are you going to walk through 10 years and fulfill it when, a, when you are tired? When you... You, are, you, you, you just, oh, I, I won't do it again. You've written on paper, but you're not going to do it. But something else must wake you up to fulfill your plan. It is what you have chosen to be a slave to. Now, when we look at Paul's writing, there are two phrases that occur in the passage that we read. The first one is, I became as. I became as. He's talking about his ability to self-transform. Ability to self-transform. And the phrase is used directly three times in the passage we read. I became us. I became us. I have become. And it is implied two times in the passage. So you can say five times Paul uses the phrase, I became. In just a short passage of scripture. So he's telling you, you are what you choose to be. I am making myself what I want to be. I became us. And the second phrase you find that he re uses repeatedly in the passage is that I might win. That I might win. You can say he had a winning mindset. In four verses, he uses the phrase that I might win. And if you include the phrase that I might by all means save some, then we can say five times in this passage, he says that I might win. Five times, I have become. Five times, I must win. The two are related. I'm going to win if I become. Becoming is winning. The kind of person who wins is the kind of person 
you choose to become. Because one of the things you're going to know in life, life sometimes can be very, very some way. As we say in Ghana, you know, I, I pay attention sometimes when I'm driving by the road and I see a woman carrying a baby and begging for food or begging for money. I think about that baby and I'm saying, how is this child, this girl, this boy, how are they going to change their lives? Look, look at what life has handed them. Beggar by the roadside mother. At the time they should be going to school, they are not going to go to school. Can that child choose a different destiny from what the mother has imposed on them? Yes. That's the core of the Bible. The core of the Bible is that no matter what was imposed on you by life, you can choose differently. Now, if people are going to tell you, it's okay, life is not fair, nobody gave you a chance, you were not well treated, and they can make you settle for what life gave you. But Paul says, I have become, I have made myself. Why? Because I want to win. I don't want to be a loser in life. And of course, when he talks about winning, he talks about winning in the assignment that God gave him to reach out to people. So in Paul's mind, Winning means two things. One, it means to become the person God wants me to be. I must become the person God wants me to be. That's what we call self-actualization. I must become that. If God wants me to be righteous then I'm not going to say, oh, my, my mother was a prostitute and gave birth to me, so I, I don't think I can ever live a righteous life. You can. Of course, you didn't choose your mother, but you can choose your lifestyle. Have you noticed that in life, some of the greatest achievers have come from the most disruptive backgrounds? If you listen to people's story, you can't, even find, you, can't, you can't even know how they managed to get to where they are. They tell you their story, you say, wow, I thought I had suffered, but others have suffered. <laughs> I thought I came from behind, but others come from behind. You think your village is bad? Go and look for somebody's village. Then you know that in Ghana, there are villages and there are villages. <laughs> I'm telling you, people come from places. You think there are demons in your family until you know that the chief witch doctor's son is around. You think there are, there are, there are, there are spirit, ancestral spirits in your family? You? What, what about him? Whose father and grandfather and great-grandfather is in a demonic world? Does that mean that they have no hope? No. Paul says, I can become. I choose whose slave I want to be. To win in life is to become the person God wants me to be. You know, many times we think about things. So we're going to do a 10-year plan, I want to make money. But if you, want, if you have a poverty mindset, no matter how much money you are thrown into, if you are thrown into an ocean of money, you still come out poor. Because it doesn't start with money, it starts with a mindset. Many of us are pursuing things, but in life we pursue being. Because if you pursue being, being will get the things. The greatest change that must happen will not happen in your hands. It happens in your head before it comes into your hand. That I might win, it means to become the person God wants me to be. Secondly, it means to do the things God wants me to do. To live life in such a way that you know that I have achieved, but the things I have achieved are meaningful. 
everybody can achieve things in life. Everybody can build buildings. Everybody can have money. Not everybody, but most people can have money. Everybody can be famous. But that doesn't mean your life is meaningful. You can be famous and miserable. You can be rich and just miserable. Because the greatest achievement is not what you get, is becoming and doing what God wants for your life. That's why we don't measure achievement with money and acquisitions. We measure achievement with fulfillment and significance. So for, for some of you, you may be teachers, and all you're going to do is teach class two or class three for the rest of your life. And you may not build mansions, but if you are there transforming lives, bringing hope to children, and you do it faithfully, you will be a more happier, fulfilled, significant person than the person who built meaningless buildings. and had almost zero positive contribution to anybody. Don't measure the plan for your life by acquisitions. You measure it by fulfillment and significance. Being where God wants me to be, doing what God wants me to do. Of course, money is very important, and I know uh, your 10-year plan, most of you is going to money, 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 money. And of course, make some money. But you make money basically so that you don't become a beggar or be controlled by another person. What you're looking for is financial freedom, not exactly wealth or riches, but just financial freedom. And if you should have riches, what are you going to do with it? Final thing we want to look at. The same passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we jump to verse 25 to 27, and Paul is telling us further about his mindset. And to everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, that's a fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself become disqualified. The word discipline is used. And discipline is basically what I do and keep doing. What I do and keep doing. Discipline is about routines. Routines sustain life. Our universe follows routines. Our planet follows routines. That's why we can predict eclipses or the arrival of comets because there's a certain routine. Our bodies follow routines. Our heart beats, blood circulation, breathing. All of these things are disciplined actions. Can you imagine if your, your heart says, you know, I've been beating for so many years. I've been beating, no break, no break. I have to go on vacation. I, I need to have to go to Dubai. <laughs> so, I mean, I, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just take about 10 minutes vacation. <laughs> That's the end of you. But your heart beats in a routine constantly. Your blood circulation is a routine. That means that your life depends on routine. That's what discipline is. Discipline is doing something and continuing to do it. And Paul had a routine of life, which he talks about in the passage. There is a routine about him. There is something about how he approached life, and it's in two things. The first one is repeated thoughts. Repeated thoughts. And his thought is, I must become, I must win. I must become, I must win. I must become, I must win. That's his mindset. If he faces a problem, I must become, I must win. How are you going to deal with life? I must become better. 
I must improve. I must improve. I must learn more. I must improve myself so that I can win. So if Paul, he wasn't married, but if he was a husband and he had problem with his wife, he's not going to say my wife is a witch. He'll say I must become a better husband so I can win at this marriage thing. I must become a better wife so I can win at this marriage thing. Because it's so easy to complain and without becoming. It's very easy for a pastor to say, my members are stubborn. Which is very easy to say. Than to say, I must become a better leader so I can win and lead this flock. Many times, you know, as general overseer, I talk with our pastors, and there are pastors who complain, Pastor, uh, you, the geo, you don't know what we go through on the ground. I say, I'm also, I'm also on the ground. <laughs> you don't know what we go through. You know, it's hard, and it's there, and it, you call the people, don't come, and they don't come to church, and today they come, next week they don't come, and next week they don't come, and then one day they come. I say, I know that. They do the same for me, too. But what I tell them is, is there another church in your community that is doing well? They say, yeah, a new church came and everybody is going there. So you cannot say churches don't do well here because one is doing well. What you can say is there is something I haven't discovered yet. And I must become that so that I can do my job. Because if you don't have that mindset of I must become in order to win... Life will defeat you. And you're going to make a lot of excuses. Because believe me, life is hard. If anybody tells you the opposite, tell them they haven't lived yet. Life, as the Nigerians would say, Nawao, is hard. It's hard. But it is livable. It is livable. We can overcome. And Paul says, I must become. I must win. That's his repeated thought. And then his repeated action. If you read the passage, he says, I keep running. I keep fighting. 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 That's my action. If I face it and it's tough, I keep running and I keep fighting and I keep, I don't quit because I keep running and I keep fighting. It's called routine. The running routine, the fighting routine. So what's your routine? You face an obstacle. Ah. Oh. Life is too hard. I, mean, I'm, I don't think I can do it all. Ah, man came to do some. <laughs> he didn't come. <laughs> Human being came to do some. He didn't come to do all. Me to have tried my best. Me to have tried my best. It can't happen. You have a weak mindset. You have to go back to the Bible. Paul says, I become because I want to win. And I keep fighting. And I keep running. If you're going to fulfill something meaningful, become somebody significant in the next 10 years. This is how you do it. And next week we'll learn how to put this in a written form so we can have a plan for our lives to overcome and to be the best that God has for us. Amen. Father, we thank you that in your word we find the wisdom for life, the way to make our lives work. And I pray, Lord, for each one of us, myself included, for everybody here, help us, Lord, to have this becoming and winning mindset that we will continue to be better versions of ourselves until we can say, 
I am what God wants me to be. May our lives conform to your purposes and to your plans and to your will. And may we pursue things that are noble and righteous and things that bring honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.